All right, friends, I worked extra hard for this one, so I hope you enjoy this. Um, I am east of Mammoth Hot Springs and maybe about 2,000 feet above the valley floor. This is the Gardner River uh, flowing to the north to the town of Gardner out the north entrance of the park. Of course, this was the area uh, they had the floods in June of 2022. I actually had to take off my shoes and uh, ford across the river because the footbridge is uh, washed out. Um, and it was a much bigger hike than I anticipated. Um, but I really wanted to come up here. Um, I'm not looking forward to going down, but let's focus on what's up here. Um, I'd actually seen this location in photos. You can see it from a distance. You can see it from Mammoth with binoculars. You can see some of the features. Um, and I've read the write-up on this and I, I just knew I had to get up here one way or another. Unfortunately, there's no trail. So it was a, a pretty steep and, and pretty tricky climb up here. But what we've come to is we're just just off the peak of a mountain called Mount Everts, not Everest, that's in the Himalayas, Everts, E-V-E-R-T-S. Um, and most of this mountain, at least off here to the, um, to the north, is made out of these kind of drab, cream and gray colored um, sedimentary rocks. These are Cretaceous, these are about 70 million years old. Uh, these were deposited when there was a big inland sea in the western U.S. So these would have been uh, shoreline deposits, streams, floodplains that were dumping into that uh, river system. And um, those actually project over into here where my backpack is, except you'll notice that they're a different color. They're a little more reddish. And the real star of the whole show <coughs> is uh, this contact right here. I'm gonna see if I can back up a little bit so you can see a little bit more of it here. And so what we have above us here this is the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff. This is the 2.1 million year old, first of the three big Yellowstone eruptions, um, kind of inundating this landscape here. And this contact zone is just really instructive and just really spectacular. So let me see if I can walk you through it here. Um, so the reason we have the color change in these Cretaceous sedimentary rocks is that the heat the actual heat of this ash as it poured across this landscape baked into these subsurface or into the, the rocks that were at the surface, these Cretaceous rocks, and actually oxidized them to some degree. You can see a nice brick red paleosol here and then the, uh, the sandstones right here kind of forming this kind of pinkish color as well. Um, and so we've got the Cretaceous rocks here minding their own business for a good 70, 65 or so million years. Then this colossal eruption, this big massive eruption of the Yellowstone region uh, first forms a deposit of what we call um, uh, ashfall tuff. So this tuff here, you'll notice is super soft and crumbly, uh, just powdery, but super crumbly. So this would be the initial eruption uh, sending ash up into the atmosphere and then raining down and blanketing the landscape. So that's what this good, um, it's probably maybe two meters or so from down here up to where it gets a little darker. That's what all this represents. And you can see it was sort of fine in the initial stages, this really powdery material. But as we work our way up into here, uh, it gets a little more granular. Um, so now we've got a little bit larger particles, probably tiny pieces of pumice falling out of the sky. <clears throat> and then, just when you thought the worst was over with the ash falling out of the sky, a good six feet or two meters of ash, then we have this massive, and I'll, I'll walk around the corner a bit so you can get the full scale of it. Then we have these pyroclastic flows, these big hot avalanches of ash coming barreling across the landscape and they're so hot that they fuse some of this ash here so you can see it goes from being kind of granular i can rub it with my finger to being completely literally rock hard right in here and this pyroclastic flow as it's moving across the landscape the bottom even though it's very hot 
it's uh, coming in contact with the ground. So that part of the pyroclastic flow is cooling quite quickly, forming this darker, uh, very glassy tuff. So we can see some of the crystals in here, these little white and shiny pieces. Uh, but the black stuff is, is much like obsidian in a way. It's very glassy in nature. Um, and as we move back a bit from the cliff on this heinously steep slope, um, let's look this way with the sunlight, we can see that it gets a lot more light colored up above. But this is all part of the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff. And this is just sort of a classic um, depiction of how these things progress from the red uh, paleosols, the red baking of the subsurface materials here, the initial uh, ash fall tuff, the white tuff that we see here that blanketed the landscape. And then this would be what we call an ash flow tuff. This was the pyroclastic flow moving across the landscape. And it had so much heat and so much, um, I suppose, density in terms of just crystals in it that it just fused uh, together to form this resistant unit that caps the top of this mountain. <clears throat> um, really pretty remarkable. Um, let's see, anything else in here that's pretty neat? Well, one thing that's kind of cool here is you can actually also see um, the orientation of the bedding here. So these sandstone layers, and you might be able to get a sense over there as well, are dipping uh, to the north or to the, to the northwest, I suppose. Uh, in that direction and we can see that to some degree right here these beds are dipping in that direction down away from you and <clears throat> look at the relationship then between those beds here's the sandstone cretaceous sandstone and there's the ash right there so we have a really pronounced angular unconformity and unconformity is a contact right here where my hand is that represents uh, a large period of geologic time between two units. We've got 70-ish million year old Cretaceous marine sandstone sitting, under, uh, sitting underneath this 2.1 million year old volcanic deposit. And right along the contact, you can actually see some of these chunks have been ripped up. So these are called rip up clasts, uh, just sort of an erosional surface that the ash then blanketed uh, as it, as it moved across this area or as it was deposited on this area in this area and then the pyroclastic flows kind of came over the top of it um, see if we see anything different down here looks like there's quite a few clastic dikes kind of cutting through it uh, as well um, <clears throat> but really just remarkable and um, it was a sucky hike uh, the last hour or so it probably wasn't worth it then but now that i'm up here and caught my breath and my shirt is sort of drying out um, it's definitely worth it so uh, this is the Everts formation Cretaceous age material and then part of our pyroclastic flow and ash fall tuff from the eruption of the uh, first Yellowstone uh, caldera what's sometimes called the Island Park created the Island Park caldera and deposited this thick sequence of the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff 2.1 million years ago. Just a little further down the hill, you can get a sense. I think the cliffs get a little taller down around the way. Um, here, they're probably getting close to 80 to 100 feet, but I think they get a little thicker as you go that way. But great view, Mammoth Hot Springs, the Gallatin Range in the distance. Um, shoot, I'm too far close to the cliffs. Around the corner, you can actually see Yellowstone Falls. Got the Gardner River down here. Uh, and then looking north into Montana. So I hope you enjoyed this one. A lot of effort went into it. So enjoy.